the founder and CEO for Young Leaders Development Program. And we're going to have lots of fun today, and we're all going to participate in playing games as much as the space can allow. But first, but first, we're going to go through a very short presentation, then the girls here, the young leaders, are going to also uh, do a, a short testimony, which one, one minute. This is Sandra also from American International School, going to do another two, two minutes, maybe, testimonials. Then we move to the third part, which is the game, playing game, and we're going to show, show you how fun learning can be. Okay, you all ready? Yes! All ready? Yes! No, I want to say yes! We're all ready? Yes! Very good. Now, mapping your student's success, classroom success. Now, when I look at you, just uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, anybody familiar with IQ? Yes. Who's yes. familiar with IQ? Yes. Okay. What about EQ and BQ? Emotional, emotional, emotional intelligence, and I don't think anybody, anybody uh, familiar with PQ, this is a positive intelligence. And this is, this is a new science. We will just give you, touch the uh, tip of the iceberg when you go through this presentation about that. Now, as we, when, uh, okay, when we born, I'm assuming we're going to be zero in IQ and PQ, just for, for the argument's sake, okay? And, okay, as we go through, as we go through and go uh, through life and go to school and university, you can see uh, about 70% of the students graduate with IQ between uh, about 100, between 100 and 120. This is the average, 70% of the population. However, if you look at the EQ and EQ, you only see about 20. This is for 97% of the student population. The reason being, because they haven't been exposed to so many things, okay? Now, we want the minimum to be at 80 PQ, AQ, okay? Just for them to be able to pass, to pass their interview, initial interviews for a job interview after graduation. So what happened at this point here when they graduate, they start going for interviews and so on, and they find out they're not getting the job. After one, two, three months, okay, they actually, their dreams start evaporating. They dream to make more money, get married, get kids, and retire. And this is a life cycle between graduation and retirement, and they feel they are really having a, 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 what we call a rat race. They just going in their place, going in their place, and they're not really going anywhere. Okay? Because they started in the wrong place. They just got any job. Doesn't matter if it's related or not related, and they got stuck over there. Now, to explain this in a little bit more, page, okay? Uh, yeah, we need to keep up with me. Yeah. And this is, this is the gap, actually. We want them to be here when they graduate, at 120. Okay, how are we going to do? Just to explain this a little bit about that. Okay, yes, Paige. Okay, so, uh, this is a typical curve, curve without outstanding intervention. Okay, so you can see this is the time the years, and this is the PQ and EQ. At the age of 40, which is quite few of us here, at the age of 40, we will have if we go through life a normal pace, we will have, without outside intervention, we will have enough IQ and PQ and EQ to venture, to go through life and venture and start taking risk. But you know what happened at this age? <coughs> at this age, we have so much responsibility. We have loans, we have our, our children going to, to school. Then many people, 97% to be precise, they choose not to take risk. And they go through life knowing that they have more potential, but they don't want to risk it because it's too risky. Am I saying right here? Yes. Many people like this. However, if we intervene, what's happened now, as we said, 97%, they never reach their full potential, and only 3% venture actually and start, start 
uh, moving forward. Now, if we intervene, that's what happened. If we start intervening early, at early age, you see at age of 20, after graduation, you have about 120 AQPQ. You think at this age, student graduating, they can afford yes. to risk it? Yes. Yes. Big time? Yes. They have nothing to lose. Okay? <laughs> so that's what we want if we intervene. And that's where we want them when they graduate from university. Unfortunately, only 3% graduate from university with uh, ability with this uh, EQ and P PQ ability about 100, between 100 and 120. Okay? And if you look at the worldwide statistic, you see they are the one who's controlling the financial market, the job market, everything. Okay? Now, okay? 90% of them, they move ahead. Uh, they have head start, and only 3% or 10% they like, like behind. Okay, now let's uh, see here. What is the secret formula of achievement? It's the uh, uh, three parts. Okay, first, IQ, EQ, or EQ, MQQ, and the combination of this, the right combination of this actually can, uh, okay, can actually turn a challenging into opportunity. That's what we want them not to be afraid from being challenged, actually looking for a challenge to turn it into a question. So, <coughs> so what's IQ? Just very briefly, logical intelligence and analytical intelligence and technical intelligence. And if we look at this graph here, Einstein, for example, 160 plus is IQ. Most of the population in the middle, 40 is 70 percent of the population are in the middle, as we said, and very few are mentally analytical or low intelligent, and some of them superior or exceptionally gifted. Okay, only 0.13 of the population worldwide are extremely gifted. By the way, most of them they don't know. And most of most of us they, we think they are students because we don't understand. Okay, most of them think what's this? Like very strange, but they are way over over our ability, actually, okay? So, what is the PQ? Basically, PQ, and I really recommend for all of you to read this positive intelligence, fantastic book, bestseller. Write it down and read it for every parent, for every teacher, for everyone. Actually using our brain muscle to our advantage, not against us. Because, to, your, to, to my surprise, and your surprise now, our brain works against us. 70% of the time, holding us back because of fear, because of so many things, okay? We're not going to go into this, we're going to move forward now and tell you about the emotional intelligence, EQ, emotional intelligence, and we, in, in YLDP actually, we use this five stages of uh, emotional intelligence practically to, um, to move forward, okay? We start with self-awareness, this is where we actually put the young leaders at the right track and, uh, okay, okay, now we, we, we need to go back, okay, we put them on the right track so they have their vision, mission, goal in life, purpose in life, all of this set, then we go to self-management, so I'm, I'm going too fast because I just want you to play games at the end, okay, so, <laughs> And uh, self-management, this is where they invest their energy and invest their uh, uh, time and effort to actually uh, fulfill their mission in life. And social awareness, this is where we take them from out, out of their um, comfort zone and start connecting them like today uh, with community, with charity, with business, and so on. Then, naturally, they will start making relationships, so they learn how to maintain the relationship, how to grow it, how to use this relationship for, them, for their advancement, and of course, conflict management, and this is management resolution. If for every day, well, once you have a relation, a bound at some time to have conflict and how to handle turning a positive, a negative situation to a positive one. Okay? So, uh, now we do this through activities, it's through field trips, through so many activities, we, we do that. 
and uh, debate club, and we actually start the clubs, while APP clubs at schools, and like DIA now, we just started the club about a month back, by the National Academy, like AIS just started the club. They have the club a long time, but this is a new executive, for example, and uh, we do cultural activities, debate, uh, all kinds of things, okay? Now, if you move a little bit back, uh, now, as you know, in in uh, learning, there is two different of uh, uh, two different ways: passive learning and active learning. And we always strive. And today, we're going to see, see a great example about how to turn passive learning to an active one. And we're going to demonstrate it live for you today. So we want the learning to be active because and, and to stay active for ninety percent, not just once every blue moon. We want this to turn the education from a boring experience to an exciting one, an inspiring one. And it's very easy to do. Instead of having it in the classroom, you can have it in the gym, actually. Okay? Having it in the outside. Okay? So, and why we don't do that? We do that because if you look at the cone of learning, and you can see every two, after two weeks from learning something, if you only read it, you retain only 10%. If you hear it at 20%, if you watch and hear it at 50%. However, if you move to the active mode, you can retain between 70 and 90% if you don't. Okay? So we want this, we want the learning to stay here most of the time. We can't say 100%, but most of the time to stay in the participating and doing mode. Okay? So the student not only having fun, learning and retaining the information. Okay, and that's what we're going to be presenting today for you. And um, <clears throat> why are we doing all of this? Because we wanted to design emotionally and socially intelligent and positive leaders. And how we do that? And we call them earthquake resistant leaders in that in the program. Okay, earthquake resistant leaders. And here I want to ask to have a building to be earthquake resistant. What need to have? There is three criteria need to have. Give me one criteria. Strong foundation. Strong Very good. Thanks. Flexible. Thank you. And one more. Which is? Thank you. And this is exactly what we wanted to do. And when we say strong, it's not just in body, mind, spirit, and soul, please. So, strong and balanced and flexible, okay? And the combination of this, okay? The combination of this will produce emotionally and socially intelligent leader. And uh, how much time we have now? Okay, let's turn this next. Okay, now we're going to have uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Sandra Scott, the head of leadership at AAS, to speak with you two minutes. And then we have the student leaders to also be Sandra. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Sandra Scott from the American International School, Head of Leadership. And when I look back and think back about when some of my leadership skills were established, I realized that I can trace it back to being in volleyball, basketball, playing soccer, um, and playing baseball. And where, when I was actively learning and excited about life and everything that I was learning in the classroom, I was, you know, really having to um, go all the way with my um, active participation in games. And so uh, Mr. Molly is a master of games. Now, I met Mr. Molly three years ago, and ever since I've been sending all my students that I can possibly get there to his two-day leadership workshops and, and one-week leadership camps. And he always incorporates games. And I think that's his secret, because they learn something, they, they watch a film, and then they do a game. And so it like takes what they've just learned and immediately they go right into uh, putting it into action. And I think that's really one of the secrets why they come out of that so feeling so fulfilled and why they really anchor the information.
really since they've been with Mr. Molly and tapped into his program, I know that things have really changed radically for them in many ways at our school. So they're movers and shakers at our school as a result. And I just want to tell you today that I think that this program and anything that Mr. Molly has to say, I really, really endorse it. And I know it's going to be a really big help to you. So I suggest that you tap into it. Our school was the first leadership club established three years ago. And so uh, it's really made a big difference. So anyway, I'm going to give it over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Now uh, let's talk to uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Tassi. I'm from Syria. I'm 15 years old, and I study in Dubai International Academy. In the Wild Beauty Club in GIA, I am the vice president. And I find Wild Beauty to be one of the most beneficial and life-changing programs I've ever taken apart. I'm in a lot of um, I'm in a lot of clubs. I participate in a lot of different events, but this has been one of the most life-changing ones. I've learned so many skills. I've gained so many networking um, connections. I've learned. I know now how to set up a business, which is something I've wanted to do. I want to set up a law firm when I grow older. I know how to be a CEO. I know how to be an entrepreneur. I know how to connect people. I know conflict management, and all of this is from Wild DP um, workshops and uh, games we have and um, any kinds of activities that we do, our events that Mr. Mali hosts for us, all of them are all beneficial for us. We all gain so much from them and I think we all leave much more experienced and knowledgeable than when we enter. Thank Maybe it's not in school. Maybe I'm going to find it afterwards. 
when I came across the club, it really enlightened me. I'm like, this might be my last opportunity. I'm finishing school this year, and why not? Let's give it a try. It was last year. So I'm like, okay, I went for it. What I found was honestly amazing. You know how you have a professional football player, but no team and no field to play in? So basically, that football player is worthless. Give the football player a team, give them a field, and watch the wonders they can do. So Mr. Mele has helped me, and I've grown ever since. Uh, I was a student who sat at the end of the class. Thankfully, today I'm sitting in the front of the class with knowing many people, and I can put up conversation. I can stand here with no speech written and speak, thankfully. So he has helped me, and I hope you allow him to help you. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, let's start the first game. Thanks, uh, Sarah. We'll start the first game. So, um, the first game we have, we're going to be having some buckets and some cubes. And the aim of this game is to show you that with one small stimulus, you can produce numerous, um, you can produce numerous results. So, if we have some volunteers from the staff. So, um, can we have six volunteers, please? It's fun, it's fun. Come on. Okay, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. Come on. Let's have fun. You see, each one of us is a kid inside. And now we want to get it up, okay? We want to have fun, right? Thank you. 
Only when you get the flight with the flight for exactly three hours uh, together. And those who do more than two patients, they will, they will be the one. And you can give them some incentive. Give them some incentive.
you have a chemistry teacher here? Science teacher. 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 Now, if they don't know how to solve it, they can go and check the answer sheet and they can deduct one more, for example. Because the, the purpose is for them to learn, not just to pay to learn. So they can actually go and have them posted somewhere. They have to run, they use time, for example, to go and search for it if, if they don't know the answer. And also deduct one power for some, some, some penalty need to be injected. So, for the end of the area, the area of circle is the area of tropeis. Okay, thank you very much. And now let's go for the fourth game. This is your
hundreds of games designed only by the hundreds of ideas you can come up with to make it, to make it fun. Don't you agree? Yes. Do you enjoy it today? Yes. And imagine if you turn, if you turn the class into a, a, a playground and get the kids to enjoy and learn. How are you going to go home? Then their mom, if she's going to give them penalty at home, she says, tomorrow I'm not sending you to school. They start crying because they love school. We want to turn the school to a place where they really inspire children, make them happy, and make them learn and in a very active way. Okay? Thank you for listening. And uh, we have a uh, free seminar called Awakening the Sleeping Giant Within offered for the school. If you want to register for this, today we're doing it free. The value for it is 7,000, and we are outside, we have a booth, we are partners with uh, KHDA. So you can register your name, and we get in touch with you, and we plan to go, and then we, we uh, organize time to go and do the presentation for the uh, young people, for, for, for the students. And if they want to continue on the program, they can sign, and the membership is free as well. Okay, they can sign a membership and uh, we can start by the TV club at your school. Okay, thank you very much for being great, great listeners and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Before I want to give a chance for Alan, you can take a chance to give us a chance. Would you give Alan a chance for one minute to speak? Started um, the YLDP club, and it was all by chance actually. I was in uh, the Gateway program, the Gifted and Talented program in my school, and uh, our coordinator, Mr. Plant, gave us this opportunity and he said, There's this incredible gentleman coming to our school, very motivational, inspirational. His name is Mr. Mani Aliaman, and uh, he came to our school, gave us the same, the same talk, Awaken, Awakening the Sleeping Giant Within. And uh, I was blown away, it was so incredible. I was really motivated, inspired. Um, and of course, from then on, I was really hooked onto it. And then I went to the International Young Leaders Conference, and I learned more there. I made new connections, new contacts with people uh, in various industries, and even my own um, peers. I met new peers, and I made friends with them, and uh, contacts and connections. And then we came to our school DIA, and we set up the YLTP Club at DIA. And again, we had uh, Mr. Mani coming in again, and he gave us an executive development program where I learned to become a better leader and a better person using emotional intelligence and EQ and IQ, essentially. And that's where I developed my own personal skills, things like time management, self-awareness, self-management, and it's really skills that can help me in my life later on. I know that for sure one day when I start my own business or my own company, I will be utilizing these skills. I've got whole notes that I took in those two days, which I will be referring to later on in the future. Um, and I just want to thank Mr. Mali again for providing me this wonderful opportunity. Um, definitely going to use this later on in my life. So thank you.